In this mini tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through some simple and more complex search strategies, which you can apply when you using Google for searching. Let's begin with a very general search and I'm going to enter in the search term information literacy. You can see from this very broad term that I've received 172 million results. And this is because when I put in the term information literacy, Google is searching for the phrase inf websites that have the phrase information literacy, but also websites that just have the word information and also websites that just have the word literacy. So you can imagine that that is a huge number of websites. In order to search for the exact phrase, I need to put the phrase in inverted commas. So Google knows that I'm looking only for the phrase information literacy and not the individual words. And so when I search for this, you can see that from 172 million results, my uh, search results have been reduced to just 6,300,000 results. So still a huge number, but nowhere near as many as before. Using uh, the inverted commas or the quotation marks, I can actually expand my search to look for sites that have two particular phrases. So in this case, I'm going to search for websites that have the phrase information literacy and inquiry learning. Now, in databases, if I wanted to do this search, I would need to include the operator and to tell the database that I want to look for both, set, both of these phrases. However, Google is not a database, it's a search engine and its rules are slightly different, although in a lot of ways they're similar. And we don't need to include that particular operator. Google automatically adds in and when we're doing a search. And that's why when I did the first search information literacy, the first results that came up were the ones that had information and literacy because it automatically inserted the word and in between when I didn't have the inverted commas. So let's have a look now. We have 6 million results just on information literacy. If we're looking for websites that have both of these phrases, we can expect our search to be narrowed because there will be less websites that include both of these search terms. And sure enough, we're down to only 74,000 results because not as many websites include both of these phrases. If instead I used the operator or, which Google does use, I'm now looking for websites that have the phrase information literacy or inquiry learning. And so I can imagine that my results are going to increase because instead of looking, insisting that both of these phrases are present in the websites it returns, I'm asking for it to return websites that have this phrase and also to return websites that have this phrase. They don't have to have both in them. So let's see if we get more than 74,000 when we use OR as our search operator. Yep, we're back up to 7 million. And we had about 6 million before when we searched just for information literacy. So we can see that, uh, and information literacy is the first three results. So we can make the uh, judgment there, the guess, the educated guess that information literacy has got more websites about it than inquiry learning because we had 6 million just for information literacy. When we add in inquiry learning as another possibility, we only move up to 7 million. Uh, and you can see here, even on this very first page, we've got information literacy, IL, IL, one inquiry learning, two inquiry learning, even though it's from the same website. Uh, then we're back to information literacy, information literacy. So obviously information literacy is a much more popular term in terms of uh, what Google has registered for websites. Now, if we uh, put brackets around this search phrase, and we add the terms primary and secondary. The uh, uh, search Google is now going to look for websites that have the term information literacy or inquiry learning and that also include primary and secondary. So you can imagine here what Google is doing invisibly is putting in an and here and an and here. 
So we don't need to add those because it's Google is automatically doing it. But what we're, what it's doing because of the brackets is it's doing this search first, and then it's going to take all of these seven million results and apply uh, the terms primary and secondary, and only the websites which have both of these terms within these results are going to be returned. So we should have less than seven million. And let's have a look. Yes, we're down to one million. And you can see here that it's uh, added in. So we've got ones that have primary and secondary, the words primary and secondary, as well as the terms either information literacy or inf inquiry learning. If I change this to and, and remembering we don't need to put in and, it automatically adds these words, but just so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm now looking only for websites that have all of these phrases or words. So I'm imagining that it's going to plummet dramatically because there's going to be quite a few less websites that talk about information literacy and inquiry learning and primary and secondary. So let's see if our number drops from 1 million. Yes, there's only 301,000, which is, I think, almost one of our lowest results so far. So we're looking now for very quite specific websites here. Now, it's not often that we're looking for uh, primary and secondary when we're doing a targeted search. And so what would happen if I took out this and and instead I did a hyphen or a minus sign hard up against the word secondary? This is what, uh, in a database, you would use the word not. So you would say and primary, but not secondary. But as I said, Google is slightly different to a database. And so it uses the minus sign hard up against the word secondary. So websites that have the term secondary should now be removed from our results. And we would only get ones that include secondary, uh, the, sorry, the term primary. So I'm wondering if the numbers are going to reduce even more. Let's see. Yes, from 301, we've now got 112 because there are far fewer sites that are looking at school uh, information literacy and inquiry learning only in primary and not in secondary. So if there are 112 uh, sites or results for primary, let's see if there are more or less sites that talk about secondary in terms of inquiry learning or uh, information literacy. Have a think to yourself whether you think there's going to be a greater number of results or less. We don't really know at this stage for this one. So we've got 112,000. We only have 36,000 when we take away primary. So here we can see that our results are only to do with secondary schools. Uh, or if it uses the term secondary in the phrase. And you can see here in this example, it says Dr. Mandy Lupton is a senior lecturer. Uh, Mandy holds a Bachelor of Education in secondary music. So you can see how Google does take its search results quite literally in the fact that it doesn't intuit that I'm looking for secondary school information literacy and inquiry learning examples. It's purely looking for websites which have these phrases and words in them. And here we've got a blog about inquiry learning and information literacy that also mentions the word secondary. In this case, it's about the fact that Mandy, who wrote the blog, uh, has a Bachelor of Education in secondary music. She may not, in fact, be talking about secondary education and inquiry learning and information literacy at all. So this is actually where we can see the way that we can't rely purely on our search results. And it's something that students often do that we need to be aware of and that we need to teach uh, them very um, explicitly that just because the results uh, are there in the screen doesn't mean that the answer that they're looking for is going to be within those results. So that's a very brief explanation of some search uh, strategies using Google. I hope that has been useful. There's a great deal more information on the inquiry, open inquiry learning website for you to explore. Thank you.